the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. Everybody, I'm so happy to be in service with each and every one of you uh, today. I do have one quick announcement, and that is this next Friday, July 17th, is our church dedication night, and I know the tickets are going fast. If you've not already uh, reserved your tickets, make sure you jump online uh, and do so, and uh, it's going to be a great night. We're going we're gonna to celebrate together. We've got inspiring messages. It, it is something that you definitely do not want to miss. For those of you that have children, we will have child care available. Uh, you need to, uh, there are two different tickets. There are uh, tickets for those that will be in the main room as well as tickets uh, for those uh, in the child care. So just make sure you go ahead uh, and register so we know that we have a proper account. Well, one of the things we do every Sunday morning is uh, we take a moment and give a big welcome to all of those who are listening to our message online. Let's give our online audience a great hand. Uh, we love and are so thankful for you. Well, today we are wrapping up our starting line uh, series, and I hope that you've been encouraged and challenged by uh, these messages, and uh, I, I believe that, that today God has a word that he wants to speak to, to us. So uh, after weeks of arguing about who was the best athlete in the garden, broccoli, tomato, and yam decided to settle the argument by having a race. And so they stepped up to the starting line, and once the gun went off, they rushed out excited to finally be able to settle their squabble once and for all. Broccoli got off to a blazing start, but being a green runner, he didn't have enough stamina to finish the race, and he quickly gave up. For the first mile, Yam and Tomato, they ran neck and neck, but eventually Tomato slowed down, and he fell way behind. And Yam was, was just about to claim victory and all of the, of the bragging rights when he collapsed with exhaustion just yards away from the finish line. And over the course of the next hour, Tomato continued to run and he eventually crossed the finish line where he was declared the victor. And in the post-race interview, when asked why he was so successful that day, Tomato responded, I paced myself. All right, that was terrible. What a horrible, bad dad joke. Don't worry, some of you will get it later uh, when you're going around the rest of your day. But in all seriousness, uh, today's message may be the most important of all the messages in this series. And so I'm going to talk about finishing the race. Well, come on, say to your neighbor, whoever you're watching online church with, finishing the race well. And see, many of us in life, we are, we are great at starting things, but we're not so great at finishing them. 
You know, when the new year rolls around and we make resolutions, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work out and, and I'm going to get in shape. And so, man, I know people, they go out and they buy all the gear and they buy all the clothes and, and the gyms are packed on January 1st, but by the third or fourth week of the month, everything is back to normal. They started strong, but they didn't come close to finishing. I remember shortly after moving into the home that we now live in, I decided that it would be a great idea to finish out the basement to increase our living space. And so I ripped out these, these awful, poorly constructed temporary walls that the former owner had installed. And, and I measured things out and I drew up plans for where the new master bedroom and the new bath and laundry rooms would sit. But eight years later, other than bringing a lot more junk down into the basement, nothing has happened. I started well, but I didn't finish. I mean, how many times have we started a plan to to eat healthy and get our diet uh, under control only to head out to state fair and say, did someone say fried olives, fried Oreos, fried bananas, fried cheese, fried apple pie on the stick? Why, yes, I'd love some. And see, most of us, we don't have a problem starting, but finishing is a whole different ballgame. And so in 2 Timothy chapter 4, the Apostle Paul is writing to his spiritual son in the faith, Timothy, and and this is what he says. He says, as for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. And so, listen, Paul is is writing this. He's at the very end of his life, and then he goes on to say, I love this verse, verse 7. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. What a testimony. What a way to to go out knowing that you have accomplished what God has called you to do. And listen, without even asking you to raise your hands this morning, I know that every one of us in this room wants to run our race and wants to finish well. We want our life to matter for something. We want the world to have been impacted by our being there and by what we accomplish. Because one day we understand, we recognize that we will stand before God. And if we've been faithful and if we followed his plan for our lives, we will hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant you did it you ran well you were a faithful husband a faithful wife a faithful employer a faithful employee a servant a leader a faithful son or a faithful daughter and so today since we all want to stand before God and and hear those words I want to share some tools that will help uh, ensure that we finish our race strong We're going to look at an earlier letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4 is where we're going to spend most of our time today. And he shares some keys about finishing well. And just a little bit of background on the text first. Paul is writing to Timothy who was at this point a young leader. And Timothy was was put in charge of the church at Ephesus that was absolutely exploding with growth. And so so here's Timothy, this young guy. He's trying to to navigate and and figure out how to lead as a a young leader in this this growing and high-pressure situation. And so this is what Paul said to Timothy, 1 Timothy 4.12. He says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, in your faith, and your purity. And so how do we finish our race? Well, number one, if you're taking notes, I encourage you to write this down. Don't let anyone look down on you. Don't let anyone look down on you. In fact, uh, just let me throw this in. By the way, that includes yourself. Some of us are our own worst enemy. And so the Apostle Paul, he is exhorting Timothy that no matter how unqualified or how inexperienced you may feel, no matter what people may say to you, don't let anyone look down on you for the race that God has called you to run. He was telling Timothy in so many words, he was saying, I believe in you and you must have the confidence that you can run this race. Listen, listen to me. If you don't believe it, then no one else is going to believe it either. And listen, if we could ever start living our lives with the attitude that if God is for us, then who can be against us? That he's up there and he's cheering us on and he's helping us run through the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's what I believe. The power of death, the power of hell, and the power of the grave cannot and will not stop what God will accomplish through us. But we must be careful. 
We must be careful about the voices that we allow to speak into our lives. I'm just telling you, some of you need to hear this today, that some of the voices around you that masquerade as spiritual aren't really all that spiritual. Some of the most discouraging things I've heard in my life about the callings and the dreams that God had placed inside of me have come from spirits of darkness that were actually described, uh, disguised as angels of light. You say, well, I don't believe that. Let me show you in Scripture. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. 14, but I am not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. And so come on, I'm calling you to be aware of those that you allow to speak into your life. When Shyla and I made the decision to plant this church, it, it wasn't easy. There were a lot of naysayers. There were a lot of doubters. There, there were those who openly questioned our ability and our qualification and our calling and our giftings. And ashamedly, because of that for a season, I tried to push the call out of my mind. I tried to ignore it. But thank God, he kept pursuing me and pushing me to run my race. And, and I could never fully escape the fact that God had called us and he had a plan and a vision for our lives. And so while there were people that I had hoped would take the journey with us and, and that I had hoped that they would support us, I had to get to the place where I determined that even if all of our friends forsook us, even if people looked down on our methods and our style and our structure and our appearance, that we were still going to be obedient to the race that God has called us to run. Amen. And so to finish well, we must not let anyone Look down on us. And then Paul goes on, verse 13, he says this. He says, until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers and teaching them. Here's the second way to finish well. Number two is devote yourself to the word of God. Devote yourself to the word of God. Listen, the reason that so many of us bow out of the race that we've been gifted and designed by God to run is because we are weak and because we are an anemic. We aren't adequately equipped and encouraged, recharged and corrected by the power of God's word. Listen to what 2 Timothy 3.16 says. It says all scripture is inspired by God and it's useful to teach. Everybody say teach. Teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us to do what is right. So many are, of us are having difficulties because there's nothing and nobody that we allow into our lives to give us correction. So we've got to get this book out and say, Holy Spirit, would you speak to me because I need to become more like you. Verse 17, God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. And so if we want to finish well, we must devote ourselves to the word of God. We must get inside the pages of this book because, listen, what we find in here, it has the power to change and transform our lives. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God, it is alive and it is powerful and it is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. And so that's why if you've been around our church for any length of time, every month you hear us ch uh, challenge you to be a part of, of what we call SOAP, which is our Bible reading and journaling exercise. And listen, SOAPing every day will take you no more than 15 minutes. But listen, God, I promise you, he will speak to you out of his word. He will give you a rhema. He will give you a fresh word for your day and the season that you're in. And so this little activity, it will completely transform your spiritual journey. But listen, we've got to discipline ourselves to do it. And let me just pause here and just encourage you that have been walking with Jesus for, for any length of time. It's essential that we learn how to become self-feeders. I mean, I, I'm going to break it down and give it to you as plain as I can. Just like in the natural realm, it would be crazy to see a 12-year-old nursing at his mother's breast or drinking out of a baby bottle. In the spiritual, it's time for some of us to grow up and move beyond being bottle-fed the milk of the word. Listen, if the only thing that we are ever doing to feed spiritually is whoever steps up to this stage on a Sunday morning, listen, then our relationship with God is going to be weak and it's going to be flimsy because his word says as in Psalm 119 105 your word is a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my path and if we're not spending time in this book we're going to end up off course and we're not going to finish well but on the other hand if we can learn to read and apply the truths of 
of God's word on our own. Listen, we can be certain that we will not only run our race well, but we will finish strong. And then in verse 14, this is what Paul said. He said, do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. In other words, don't ignore or treat as ordinary the giftings that God has placed inside of you. Many people know exactly what God has called them to do, but they're afraid to step out in faith. And as such, they neglect the gift and they don't exercise it and it lays dormant in their lives. And many times, it's just like a muscle in the natural. The gift will literally begin to atrophy. It'll begin to waste away and it will begin to decline. And so the third way to finish your race, well, number three, is don't ever stop growing your gift. Don't stop growing your gift. It can't be understated. God has given each and every one of us a gift that he wants us to use for him by serving others. And one of the major keys to finishing the race is knowing why you are here and using your life for that purpose. God has given every one of us passions and and ministry ability so that we can impact and change someone else's life. And so listen, if you've not already done so, you can get into growth track. So some of you are like, well, well, pastor, you don't, you don't know what has happened in my life. You don't know the hurt. You don't know the pain. You don't know the things I've walked through. Listen, one of the best ways to get over the hurt and the offense in our past is to begin ministering in our presence because there's something miraculous that occurs when we are willing to take our eyes off of ourselves and instead put them on someone else's needs. When we do that, everything changes. Listen, I'm not saying that at times we don't need some space to to process through some things, but, but many of us have spent enough time wallowing in the pity of our past and the things that we cannot change. And so God today is using this message as a reminder. He's saying, hey, come on, get back in the race. Go ahead and strengthen your gift and use our past for somebody else's presence. And so if we're gonna finish our race well, we must not let others look down on us. We must devote ourselves to the word. We must strengthen our gifts. And then verse 15, it says this, give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your task so that everyone will see your progress. Here's the fourth way to make sure you finish well. That is number four. It is stay focused. Stay focused. In other words, don't get distracted. Listen, in this journey of our lives, there are hundreds of different distractions that threaten to pull us off course. And some of the distractions are things that are really meant for our destruction. But many times, the distractions, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, are really good things. And if we're not careful, the good things of life can threaten the real race that God has called us to run. And so many of us, we're trying to juggle way too many different things. And so let me ask, is it necessary for little Petey to play three sports at a time? Is it really necessary to be gone every single night of the week? Is it really necessary to work 70 plus hours a week, 50 weeks a year? Is it really necessary to do everything that you're trying to do and accomplish right now? Let me pose it to you this way. Let's suppose that in order to continue living in the month of August, you had to eliminate three things from your life next week in order to stay alive. What would you cut? Come on, I want you to think about it right now. What would you take away? And listen, would anyone really miss it? Would the world stop spinning? Listen, if we want to finish our race well, then we've got to focus and eliminate distractions. And then in verse 16, Paul tells Timothy, He says, keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Keep a close watch, Paul says. The last way to finish well, number five, is to watch your life and never give up. I can promise you that running after Christ with your whole life and all your strength is is it's not going to be easy. But what I can promise you is that when we pursue him, we will experience an abundant life full of peace, full of hope, and full of joy. And if we're going to finish well, it is going to take perseverance, grit, and determination. 
Marathon runners have described something as they run these long 26.2 mile races. It's referred to as hitting the wall. And it's this moment where, 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 where you feel as if you just can't go on, that you can't make it another step, that you can't go another moment. But what they've discovered is that if you'll push through this, this wall feeling, there's a newfound source of, of energy in victory on the other side. And some of you are sitting here today, and you feel as if your world has been shattered, and it feels like you can't take another setback. But listen, can I encourage you through the power of the Holy Spirit to push through it because there is promise and there is hope and there is victory on the other side of our perseverance. Paul said it, we read it a few moments ago, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. Paul didn't say, he didn't say, I've run a perfect race. He didn't say, I've never stumbled. He didn't say, I made all the right decisions, but he did say, I have fought and I have been faithful and I have finished. Finishing well impacts not only our life, but everyone else's life that our life comes into contact with. Our kids, our grandkids, our friends, our co-workers, perhaps maybe the atheist boss that you work for, the girl at the pharmacy. Listen, they are all counting on us to get this thing right. And so when it comes to the race of our life, there is more at stake than we could ever realize On March 2nd, 2008, at the Big Ten Indoor Track Championships, Heather Dornadin, a senior at the time, lined up for one of the biggest races of her life. I pieced a couple of videos together to give you a a complete perspective. The second video that is taken from the stands, it sounds like it was uh, potentially family members recording her. And so listen, due to the technology at the time, these aren't the greatest clips, but but I want you to watch, and I I believe God's going to speak to you through this. The 600 meter underway, Heather Dornard in Minnesota finished second this event a year ago. She was in lane four. And Dornan is probably going to be your favorite. She actually won the NCAA championships in 2006 in the 800, but she only won one Big Ten championship in the two years. Three laps in this event, 600 meters, three times around the 200 meter track here at the field house. What a bold move by Fallon. She's looking very confident, and the Penn State runner is just running amazing today. She did win her heat in the 400, but ended up taking fourth overall. That's Fawn Dorr moving into the lead, a sophomore from Penn State. Dornan in running second. Dornan last year scored 23 points for the Golden Gophers in their Big Ten Championship, so they're really relying on getting a lot of points from her this weekend, and she's just coming by Fawn Dorr now in the home stretch, heading into the Bell Lap. Gordon and falling down gets up quickly, but that's going to cost her. Lucky she wasn't injured. Her teammate just went to the front, though, so they may be able to recover from that. And Dornan is flying down the back she stretch. Is she catching is catching up. She is going to catch Fondor, and she may catch the leader. Wow. But she's got Fond. This is a gutsy effort by Dornan. your plan to fall. 
And I know that when you fell, it took all the wind out of yourselves. But listen, I want to encourage you this morning. It is not time to give up. You've got to get to your feet and brush the dirt off and stay in the race. Don't give up. And I know that it seems that what you've worked so hard for and and all your dreams that it all seems lost. But hear me this morning. You are too close to quit now. I'm encouraging and challenging you to take another lap because you never know this might be the lap that you experience experience the breakthrough that you've longed for and that you've hoped for because you can't stop because you're tired. You can't stop because your feelings got hurt. You've got to keep running. Somebody needs to stay in the race. Somebody needs to hear that you are going to make it. You're going to do it. God has placed an unstoppable fire inside of you. So don't stop because one day, one day we're going to see Jesus face to face. And all of the struggles and all of the trials and all of the pain of this world is going to fade away. Please hear me this morning. Don't give up the season that the enemy has used to try to destroy you. God is going to turn it around and he is going to use it as a platform to do incredible things through you. Listen, your misery is going to become the foundation of your ministry. Be not weary in well-doing for in due season you will reap. If you faint not, stay in the race. Don't give up. You can make it. You are not alone. One of my favorite passages in the Bible, Isaiah 43, 1. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name, by your name. You are are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Come on, somebody needs to begin to speak right now to your mountain and to your situation. And you need to just speak it in faith. Listen, I am not going to give up. I have come too far to turn back now. My breakthrough is just around the corner. My miracle is just on the other side. Come on, stay in the race. Don't give up. Listen, if we are faithful one day, we are going to look at Jesus face to face and we're going to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into rest. Somebody who's tired, somebody who feels like throwing in the towel. Come on, it's not time to lay down and sleep. It's not time to rest. It is time to move forward. With every head bowed and every eye closed, there are some of you today that you're not even running the right race. And can I tell you that in this moment right now, it is a great time to say yes to Jesus, to take that first step, to repent, to tell God we are sorry. It is a great time to be forgiven and to be set free. And so if you're ready to make that choice without hesitation, without looking around, would you just raise your hand right now? Thank you. Listen, this is the greatest decision that you could ever make. Let's pray, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for the power of your word. And Lord God, I thank you for your unconditional love for us. And Lord God, those that are listening under the sound of my voice, Lord God, I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that those that are making that step, Lord God, we do so with boldness and with gladness. Lord God, we come to you with our brokenness and our sin. And Lord, we lay it at your feet. And Lord God, from this moment forward, Lord God, we are committed to going your direction. Lord God, to running the race that you have called us to run. Lord God, I pray for those that are listening today. Lord God, who have stumbled, who are weary, who've gotten tired, and maybe they're hurt, and they felt like giving up. Lord God, right now, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit, Jesus, Lord God, that you would restore, and that you would encourage, and that you would strengthen, Lord Jesus. Lord God, because there is still daylight at hand to pursue the calling that you have for us. We ask all of this in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. We're going to take the next few minutes. The worship team is going to lead us in a song. Let's just take a few moments, let this word settle in our heart and worship God together.
try. 